Welcome back to the third episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Last time we left off with uh, finishing the investigation portion of episode two. Now we're going to continue into the trial. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. You better not show any signs of weakness, May. Or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder. And we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin, then. You may call your first witness. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm, a, I'm the detective in charge of homicide down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. The body was found by this window here. The cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. The court accepts the statue as the evidence. Still calling it a statue. Now, detective. Yes, sir. You immediately arrested Mr. Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had evi I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Maya Fay's arrest. As soon as a phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. Defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. The very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh. Mac! Hey! Maya just threw something at me. What's this? Well, my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness testimony. She would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. <laughs> Should have expected Maya to know some sort of some of her sister's tricks. All right, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my my cross examination. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. Who did you say you got a call from? Hey pal, don't play dumb. You know who. The call was from a customer at the Gatewater Hotel. Right across from the scene of right across from the crime scene. 
Okay, I pressed. Not sure it did much, though. Right, please continue. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I think the, the last um, testimony was probably not as important, so I'm not going to press that one. Are you absolutely sure it was us? Well, that's a stupid question. <laughs> Listen, pal, your dumb act will only get you so far. With her funky hippie clothes and your spiky hair? You two stand out like, like suspicious people at a crime scene. Well, he does have a point about her. She is pretty unmistakable. I should pick my points to press with a little more, a little more care. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why is that? What's your reason? Why? We had a witness account describing her. Hold on just one second. Yeah? If I had heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence. She did it, right? Huh? Did I say that? Yes, say it. Said it. <laughs> exactly. What about this suspicious woman in Pink's claim is was hard evidence? What? This May is a suspicious, and she sure isn't Pink, pal. Well, I guess she is Pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. You have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um. I guess pressing can have its can have its advantages. Yes. Ah. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Hard evidence. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab results show that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. How do you like that? That's my hard evidence. Before we get begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Your Honor? Why don't you test about this testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Ah, uh, I know. I'm real embarrassed. I forgot about it, Your Honor. Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written, but let's press that one. Of course I do, pal. Uh oh, you sounded pretty confident. This might not be good. Lab results show the blood was the victim's. From her finger. If she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. How do you know? Oh, Detective Gumshoe. You get a lot of cases where the victim actually writes the killer's name. Sure, it happens all the time in books and the movies. This isn't a movie, Detective. Oof. Let's, let's talk about reality, shall we? Um, I guess I haven't heard of it many cases, no. Don't you find it a little odd that the victim would write down a name? Especially the name of her own sister. Ah, yeah, actually. You got a point, pal. Stop right there. The witness's opinion on the matter is irrelevant. 
facts are clear. The victim wrote down the name of the accused. The victim told us the name of her killer. Order! Order! That didn't go so well. That's right! What he said. Okay, let's keep on pressing. Some other ones, just to see. the victim's body after security Okay, let's, let's just start from the beginning. Because I have no clue which one to press and which one to, uh, to present evidence right now. And did you find any evidence? Now, now. Don't just go to me, pal. I just listen. I'm getting to the good part. Okay. Found a memo with a piece of paper next to the victim's body. Just because you found it next to the body doesn't mean the victim wrote it. Uh... But it has her blood. Who wrote it? The killer? I mean, not Miss May. Definitely not not me. Uh, the killer, maybe, then? The killer? Anyone can see that. Oh. You're saying the killer wrote her own name. Buddy, please. She was framed! Hold on. If that's the case, where's your evidence? Uh. Huh, I guess that was a bit of a tall order for you. Those without evidence shouldn't open their mouths. It's right. Yeah, pal. Well, detective, tell us what was written on the memo you found. Word Maya. Let me take a look at this one again. Department store receipt with letters written in blood on the back. Okay, so death was instantaneous, so how could she have written the how could she have written the message, right? I think that's it. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. No, because she died instantaneously. Objection. Objection! Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Maya Fey, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey. That's really what you're saying. What? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course you wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. Backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But... No budding your way out of this one, detective. Order! Order! The defense has, an, has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when did, exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? When? The day of the murder, the day after the murder, I forgot. When did we get this? The day after, right? We were investigating. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being, That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. What? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediately was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But there's a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! It's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. I see. Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you had something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? You're a sham, Edgeworth. The detective is a sham. I'm a sham. Uh-huh. 
I don't want to say any of these. I don't want to... I'm not a sham. Detective is just doing his job. You're a sham. I guess, okay. So Edgeworth, I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly have had to request a second autopsy report? Mr. Wright, the defense will refrain from personal attacks on the prosecution. No matter, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, say what you will, the evidence in this report is undeniable. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Uh, understood, the court accepts the evidence. Well, Your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's obvious. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Witness, your name, please. April May, at your service. Wink. Order, an introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Oh, uh, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in the court. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was, like, in my hotel room. Hee <laughs> hee. I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fay and Co. law offices. That's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Witness account. It was like nine at night. I looked out the window, you know? And then, oh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting next to the defendant in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and... and she hit her. And the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little itsy... itsy witsy... wink. Well, Your Honor, I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any... Wait, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness's te testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Mia Fey's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good S testimony. Hey, how dare you? Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Of course I will. What the hell? I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weak. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. Witness account. It was like, nine at night, I looked out the window, you know? So I'm just gonna press, get more information. Why did you do that? Huh? Why? Like, why what? Why did you look out the window? Were you expecting to see something? Oh, well, um, gee. What? That's it? She can't get out of this question that easily. I sort of, you know... 
I had a feeling in my boobs. <laughs> well, I have a feeling she's trying to avoid the question. Maybe I should press a little harder on this one. Um, okay. Let's see how far I can run with this. Surely you must have had a reason to look out your window at that time of night. I... Ooh. Oh, look, she's, she's twitching. Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness. Badgering? You insist on needing her with those trivial questions. Needling her with these trivial questions. I really don't think it should be allowed. Yeah! Yeah! Stop him! The poor girl. Order. Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Poor girl? What about poor me? You looked out the window. What did you see next? And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The woman with long hair. That was Mia Fey? Uh-huh. Slender, sort of. Well, some people might say pretty, if that's your thing. Your thing? And the person attacking her? The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know. She, she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I, I just know, okay? There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. He's right. I question the testimony. I want to say I question it, but do I have evidence to back that up? She was the only person with a girlish figure. I mean, I, I don't know. Sure, give it a try. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. You saw nothing. You're lying. Uh, you're lying? Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? Erp. You're right. What's the meaning of this? Yes, what is the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this. I mean... Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Mia, Maya Faye, you would have noticed her clothes before you noticed her physique. Oh, yeah. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo is far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these. The testimony is bogus. But, but, still, we don't know if she dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. So did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Rawr, what are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I, I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. Wink. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn. I almost had her. I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. The girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That, that clock, um... A kind of statuey clock? The thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you, Tiki? No, I think for this one, it's probably we want to press the testimony about the clock because how would she know there was a clock so far away? I only wish she would have been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross examination. I did see everything I did. The victim got her first attack. Okay. 
That, that clock. Okay. Press this one. A, a clock? Didn't this come up in another testimony recently? Well, don't look so sour, Mr. Lawyer. You can't win them all. No, but I have a feeling I'm onto something now. Okay, so I guess maybe we present... Murder weapon. Looks like a statue, but it's actually a clock made by... Let's present that and see what happens. Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Ooh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Naughty Mr. Lawyer. You just said that the statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Erp. Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too. And he was found guilty of murder. Order! Order! Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Oh, uh. The witness saw the murderer with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You'll withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. Jackson! The questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. <laughs> I was gonna say murderer, like singular. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the, wit the witness. Whew, that was close. If he stopped me there, the trial would have been over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you, you answer my questions. How did you know it was a clock? What? That That's... Because I heard it? Yes, I heard it say the time. So you've been to the law office of Bay & Co. But no, hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. The law offices of Bay & Co. where the murder took place are very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, I'm not. Because the statue has the work at clockworks taken out of it. It's empty. There's no way they would have made a sound. No, Your Honor, I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because you couldn't have heard it. Heard it. It couldn't have run. Um, same thing. It, these two are kind of the same. I think like the first two trials, they make it so like you can't really have wrong answers. Uh, so she couldn't have heard it. You were at the hotel. There was no way you could have heard a clock go off the next building. No, okay, so no, no, no. It's not that you couldn't have couldn't have heard it. It's you. It couldn't have run then. I thought. I thought those were the same thing. The courtroom proof is everything. Without it, have nothing. You are nothing. Then I would like to propose a test to see if she really could have heard. Okay. So I thought what it meant was the same thing, like, oh, you couldn't have heard it because it didn't, it couldn't have run. This is a trivial matter with no direct bearing to the case of hand. Need objections sustained. Darn. Time to switch directions. Quick. Do need to proceed, Mr. Wright? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because okay, it couldn't have run. Your Honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable that the clock in question ran. Because it's empty, it's broken, the batteries are dead, it's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. How could you possibly just have a look as soon as you can? Oh, see anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense say. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? 
It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have run. Therefore, this witness is a big, fat liar. Fat? Well, Miss May? Tisk tisk. Quite a show you put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow, he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. That's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, he approved when the clockwork was removed. Ho ho, impossible, of course. Yes, I can. I have proof, exactly. What? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proved that the clockwork was removed is... This, uh, conversation log. Take a look at this. That's a very cute cell phone. Ho ho, you have a girly phone. Wait, wait. This isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order! Order! The defendant's cell phone? Th this wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. Grumble grumble. The good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. My heart goes out to you, Edgeworth. Not. Let's hear the conversation. So you just want me to hang on, hold on to the thinker for you? You could. Ah, uh, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh, it's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out, sorry. That was that morning. Your Honor, I think this recording makes it clear that the clockwork was already gone. And this was recorded in the morning, therefore, the witness even... Before the witness even arrived at her hotel. Uh, uh, so pissed. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? Well, well, isn't it obvious? I, I saw the clock before. Um, what store was it again? I, I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. Wink. So the victim has seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense has have any objections? Right. Um, yeah, because it's a one of a kind, well, two of a kind clock that was made by Larry. One is evidence last, the last trial, and this one is here. That's the, the, the only remaining one. The witness claims she had seen it before, but this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to the court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will pr prove the witness had not seen the clock before. Made by Larry Butts, right? It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in this world. One, and the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible. Everything is sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Oh, excuses not on sale today? Oh, so burn. Ooh, ah. She like collapses. Oh shit. Oh shit. What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! 
Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. Ah. Uh, oh, sh oh. Oh, 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 ho, ho, ho. Silly me. <laughs> did I, um, like, lose it? I, I guess I did there. <laughs> Wink. Squeeze my boobs. Bounce it. It's May, let me ask. Tell me, when did you know the weapon was a clock? How did you know the weapon was a clock? Oh, shit, she's so scary looking here. Oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. This April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because you had heard about it, of course. You held it, you had heard about it because you had the wiretap. The witness had never held a clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There's no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me the evidence proving that the witness had heard the, wep the murder weapon as a clock. The wiretap. Have a look at this. Ah, ooh, that, that, uh. I found this is Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May? You were tapping the victim, Miss Mia Fay's phone, weren't you not? Oh, oh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it, it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it is not, you still have, pro you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? You prove that? I think not. Of course we can. Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. Proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is... Well, the, the log, right? The, the phone log? Present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Actually, there's something I wanted to hold on for me. And what is it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... I... Objection! Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she look... Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. La... La... Err... Witness, answer the question. Tap her phone. Miss May. Shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me like that, you... You lawyer? <laughs> Lost it. it. It's no fair. All of you gaining up on me like that. Oh, I'm so... So I'm the bad girl. Is that it? Is that it? Uh, uh, where? <laughs> that did it. The court seen the real Miss a April May now. Now to deal the final blow. Did it, didn't you? No, she didn't do it. Mr. White is the person who did it. Uh, why the wiretap? Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't tippity-tapping uh, irrelevant? 
Yeah, she's saying exactly what Edgeworth, Edgeworth wanted her to say. Miss May, we're tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of speech, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? You prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone. Ha! I'd like, to, I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking, I'd like to see her pull that off, were you? Damn, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who's thought that. And of course, I can. And I will. Can't be serious. No way. Way, I say. Way, and I assure you I'm serious, Mr. Huh. Okay, so, the killing happened around nine at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room, for room service from that sweet bellboy. Room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee, you know, like normal coffee, but cold. You don't drink it quick, then the ice melts and you have... Regular code coffee. Ice coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Wink. Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder. So, where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Fey, commit murder. No, they're going to let her just walk away. There's no way I, I can win unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense ha have anything to say? Um... Well, come on, think of something. All the bellboy as a witness are continuing examining her. Okay, so we need to continue examining her if she has more information. Right. On with the cross-examination. What exactly do you have to examine, Mr. White? Miss April May has admitted to the wiretap, yes. But that bears no relevance to the case at hand. Murder. There's no way you can prove any connection. Uh-oh. Think, this can't be the end, but I'm out of evidence. I believe the cross-examination is over. Mr. Edgeworth, the prosecution have any witness to call? None, Your Honor. She's the last. What? But that means... Maya's guilty? Wait, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. White. The defense would like to call the bellboy after all. Okay, so we want to talk to him. Tisk, tisk, tisk. As I thought. May I remind you, dear Mr. Wright, should you question the bellboy, and Miss April May's alibi proves to be solid, then by default, your client, Miss Maya, Maya Fay, will be pronounced guilty. Are you prepared to accept my condition? Edgeworth. Got me backed into a corner. I don't see any other way to take this. I accept. Very well. Court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. It certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, sir. I receive your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea set looks rather heavy. Without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. Miss May's room service. I'm the head bellboy at the fine Gatewater Hotel in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after eight in the evening Yes, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought her to her, 
to be brought to her at seven on the uh, at nine on the dot. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at nine on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at the precise. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. I see. The defense may begin this cross examination. Right. I'm ready. I hope. So. I hope. This is it? If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, Maya will be finished. I'm the head bellboy at the Fine Water Gate Water Hotel. Been four generations. I believe I received a call after eight in the morning. Yes, Miss May. Are you sure it was Miss May on the phone? Absolutely, sir. How can you be so certain? Check Miss May in personal, sir. Not only did I see her in all her stunning radiance, but I also heard her voice. Then I saw them, and I... Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, you saw them, huh? The point being, I remember her quite well, sir. Yes, what then? She asked for an iced coffee to be brought her nine on the dot. Nine on the dot, you say? Yes, I confirmed that detail several times. She was watching a program on the TV and wished to drink after she finished, sir. Nine, the time of the murder. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course. I delivered the iced coffee to her guest, May herself. For sure it was Miss May herself. Absolutely, sir. Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, room service, sir, she, she the guest, sir, favored me with a uh, um, an embr embr embracer, 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 brace. Okay, embracer. Oh, it's French for kiss, sir. Not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was um, momentarily swayed by my prim, deme prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never, ever forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. No good. There's nothing there. Is is that it? Miss Tisk, finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now. If you have any decency, we'll end this rather tedious cross examination. It was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? Protest, give up. Protest, I can't let this happen. Wait, please wait. Yes? Does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. The charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Miss Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright. I'll give you one more question. That's all. Okay. This is really it. Now. This is my last chance. What do I ask him about? About check-in, room service, bed making. Um, we, I think we know everything there is about room. About check-in, bed making. I have no idea. Go through the court records. What's bed making? Bed, bed making. Tell me about making bed that day. Oh no, that's terrible. I was running. You're going to ask bed making a new low. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. The witness will answer the defense question. Yes, well, it was quite like any other 
day's bed making. I changed the sheets, the pillowcases, and then I proceeded to make the bed. I had to bring pillows for two, of course, but they're quite light, you see. I see. Thank you. Oh no. Pillows. For two. Oh. That was the right. That was the right question, huh? Oh boy. What did you just say? Eh, uh. Yes. Pillows are light, sir. Oh boy, tell us the truth now. Was someone else staying in Miss May's room? I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you, uh, you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you norm you're normally supposed to mention. Ah, uh, yes, quite. Indeed. It was the, uh, good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention it if I wasn't specifically asked, sir. Oof. You fool. Done it. I've won. Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man, correct? Yes, sir. Then, when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who, ha who may have been the murderer. This new light, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Do you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? Who? Who is this other person? Simple, it was... The man with Miss May. The man who checked in with Miss May. Oof. Your Honor. As had been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. Yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. My, what a convenient little setup. But it's too late. Too late? I suppose you like it if it were if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of this other man from this court. Oof. Upstart. Amateur. These accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. That is all for today for the trial of Maya Fey. Court is adjourned. Mr. Wright. We're amazing in there. Really? I think I might be your, your newest fan. Oh, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool, too. Huh? That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips, it sent shivers down my spine. If you say so. So what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Well, no. I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May. He's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning, she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway... This case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm going to find out more about this man. Think he was the one who... Maybe so. This. Don't worry. I'll find him by tomorrow. I promise. I'm counting on you. I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. 
Most of her testimony were all, was all lies. In fact, there was only one part that got left on the record. I wonder what it was. A look. One part that was left on record. The victim dodged an attack, then ran to the right. She caught and struck. Okay. Okay. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in that detention. And it's up to me to get her free. To be continued. Alright, so that is the end of the trial portion. Next, we are going to keep on investigating. Um, we're going to keep investigating for more clues and second trial, which we when we're ultimately going to catch the culprit. Uh, so I'm going to end the video here now, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.